So the crisis is over. I guess everything is smooth sailing uh, through the rest of the DC comic universe history. Let's find out. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Long Box Diving, where we explore comics and story arcs pulled from the Long Box. Now, in this series, we've been exploring the history of the DC comic universe. And in the last episode, we finished the Crisis on Infinite Earth, which was a, which was a big deal. Um, and then uh, we left off every everyone that, had, that was left had been combined um, into one planet um, it, on one Earth, because there's only one Earth left, except for Superman and Lois Lane from Earth 2, um, Earth Earth Prime's Superboy and Alexander Luther from Earth 3, all of which moved to a place that Alexander Luther had created somewhere outside of the universe, um, since they really had no other place to go. And after the crisis on Infinite Earths, um, this is where we pick up. So the Justice League had formed one of the most unusual teams um, that we actually seen ever seen before in the DC comic universe, under the leadership of Maxwell Lord who had his own agenda, and that wouldn't actually become known for a while. So we see Dr. Light, we see Dr. Fate, Checkmate, Blue Beetle, um, Scott Free, Batman, John Johns is there, uh, Shazam, Guy Gardner is our Green Lantern, and, and others, there's many others in the, in the Justice League. So Booster Gold showed up in this era, and his motives are really not known specifically what he's doing there yet, uh, and, and is, he's really kind of questionable. Then we get the Suicide Squad in this era, which was had a lot of um, just mostly villains that were put together to fight crime and whatnot for the government. Uh, Checkmate um, organization was also set up by Max Lord as part of its final play, which we'll find out later. Now, lastly, the thing they we talk about here in this time frame is Batman. Now, Batman was kind of pulling away from the rest of the heroes, kind of separating himself from them uh, during this time frame. And, and, and he was just saying... You know, it was just the way it, the way it worked. Um, now, see this page here. We we actually start focusing on Batman himself. Um, Joe Chill had actually been brought to justice justice during this time frame, and that actually helped Batman um, come to some closure in his life. You know, the reason his parents were killed, he became Batman, and the things he was struggling with, all were wrapped around this. Uh, you know, trying to fight crime, trying to save Gotham, etc. And Batman's softer side softer side, actually started showing itself a little bit before the crisis as he took on Richard Grayson as Robin, um, whom later became Nightwing um, and, and had his own series. Uh, Jason Todd was next, um, but he was killed by the Joker. Um, and the Joker also wounded Batgirl, paralyzing her, putting her into a wheelchair. Um, she no longer could be Batgirl. I mean, it's it just really, really bad time for Batman. Later, there's a blip in time. Um, and Jason Todd, for some reason, was brought back from the dead, which would cause a lot, which later would cause a lot of issues in different parts of Batman and the DC Universe. In the meantime, Tim Drake took over the mantle of Robin, and Barbara Gordon, not being Batgirl anymore, became somebody called Oracle. And the three of them worked together Nightwing, Robin, um, and Barbara Gordon as Oracle, um, all kind of worked together to help keep Batman's darkness at bay. And then with the new millennium, um, we saw the Guardians of the Galaxy, or Guardians of the Universe. I keep saying Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not them. It's the Owens, Guardians of the Universe. Um, the Guardians and the Zamorians unite together to battle the Manhunters. Now, Manhunters, again, were created by the Owens way back in the beginning of time where they gathered all the wild magic together and created the Manhunters. Ended up battling them before the two crises. Now they're battling the game. Now, interestingly, I was just able to pick up some Millennium crossovers in my last haul um, the other day. Um, and I can't wait to get into them because now I kind of, I know where they're fitting here. Uh, then we see the D Dominators. Now they're an alien race, got all these razor teeth, big bulbous heads. Um, they launch an invasion that might have ended all life on earth as we know it, but they were defeated. But what they, what did happen with their coming and with their invasion is they actually created, um, this, the, or at least gave us the understanding of what the metagene was. And after their invasion, we had a lot of new heroes that came about. And, and in this time frame, we had the Teen, teen Titans were formed. Black Condor, uh, Wave Rider, The Ray. Um, all which helped fight the dom, uh, dominator, uh, Dominators and drove them off. Now, things got bad again. 
and they got really bad after this. Doomsday started rampaging all across the world, and of course he got a hold of Superman, and he ended up killing Superman. Um, and then we see Bane, the big muscler, mask-wearing, crazy dude, um, actually broke Batman's back, so he can no longer be Batman. And so after this time, so after Superman's death, four new Superman came forward. We have Steel, John um, Steel, who became Steel, is like an armor wearing with a big hammer. Uh, Superboy, who isn't really the Superboy, but a Superboy who had tactile strength. So he was more of a telekinetic. He was able to pick up things um, way above his weight limit as long as he was able to touch it. Um, then we had the Eradicator, where the kind of glass, sunglasses all the time, weird looking dude. And then Cyborg Superman. Um, and the, but not all of these Supermen were actually heroes. Uh, Cyborg Superman specifically actually destroyed Coast City. Um, that's Hal Jordan's hometown, Hal Jordan the Green Lantern's hometown. Cyborg Superman was defeated by the rest of the Supermans, uh, by, or actually by the real Superman who had returned. Um, but the, the damage was done already. And Hal Jordan, I remember the scene, Hal Jordan came to Coast City and the city is just like a crater, it's just destroyed. Um, and he was overcome with grief. Um, in doing this, he was possessed by an entity called Parallax. Now, Parallax was an entity created by pure fear. He's yellow. Um, and it was actually trapped within the Green Lantern main power battery back on the Green Lantern's homeworld run by the Owens. Now, there's always there's, always, there's still a theory that, that him being trapped in the Green Lantern is actually what caused the weakness to yellow um, from the beginning. And when he was released, that weakness to yellow went away. I don't know if that's true. They don't mention it here, but that I think that I think that's true. So Hal Jordan overcome with grief, got this uh, possession by Parallax, actually went to Oa and broke the, the main power battery and released Parallax from his being trapped. And he actually killed all the Green Lanterns at that time. Now, a single ring, a ring did survive and it made it way back to Earth to a guy named Kyle Rayner, who was the last, who has now become the last Green Lantern. Now, we're, now time moves on, and we actually turn into something called Zero Hour, and a and a bad guy named Extent. Now, this event destroyed, what destroyed the time stream, and the attempt was to remake reality again. So, in the far future, a wave of entropy was let loose. Assumably by Extant, assumably by the murdering of the Time Trapper. And it started eating its way back through time, destroying everything in its path. But we just had the same thing with the Antimonitor and the Antimatter Wave, right? Now we're here with this time energy wave, entropy wave that's coming from the future back through time, destroying all of reality. And uh, in the 64th century, Barry Allen actually tries to stop this wave by creating a vortex. Um, wave Rider was there to see it, but um, Barry Allen was killed. And uh, Wave Rider was there, and, and he it was actually another time traveler who was able to stop Armageddon in the year 2000. And he was thinking, you know what, maybe I can do the same thing this time around, and I'll gather an army of heroes. Um, now, also interestingly, I actually found a couple of the Armageddon crossover books recently. Um, and, I, and it's nice to see where these two crossovers actually fit into the timeline, and which one I should read first. So... Um, he figured out, hey, I'm going to gather everybody together. We're going to battle Extant and stop this entropy wave. Now, the battle itself in this war occurred at the, what's called the Vanishing Point. Now, this is a realm outside of time, and the Justice League there made it there and was going to make it stand against Extant. Now, in other places in the time stream, um, we actually had many different anomalies start to pop up. Some of them formed multiple versions of Hawkman, and then they actually combined together to create a new Hawkman with godlike powers. And at his death, it created another new Hawkman. Um, and then we see Superman 2, who was watching this whole thing through this giant crystal wall. And when his friends, the Atom, Our Man, and Dr. Midnight were killed, he actually just punched the wall, right? Cracking that crystal. Um, Extent then evolved into the Monarch. Um, somehow he had come, he had merged with the Teen Titans, Hawk and Dove, um, which was, I believe, servants of the order or master of order i don't know somehow that made him into make it extent into a being called the monarch who looked a lot like the wave wave rider but was supposedly a lot more powerful than wave rider now the entropy wave continued to eat its way through time and they got to where they only had three days left of time 
All right, so we then find out that Monarch Extant, Monarch, wasn't the real cause of all the issues. He is just like the guy that was there, um, you know, kind of pushing it along, but he wasn't the one that started. He's not the man behind the man. He wasn't the real reason. The real guy was Hal Jordan slash Parallax, and he was the one that actually killed the Time Trapper at the end of time, causing this whole thing to start. And what he was hoping to do was actually create a new perfect universe. Um, this is becoming um, pretty much a common theme now that the universe needs to be destroyed and rebuilt. So, But he was trying to do this. And because of the destruction of Cove City and other things, he was trying to remake reality to bring those things back and bring a reality that he preferred versus what actually was happened. And he was actually starting to recreate reality before the crisis um, had happened, which would have brought you know, another whole problem, all right? So the Spectre actually shows up and kind of puts a stop to all this. And in that final battle, a guy named Damage actually became infused with all that energy, right? That energy, the entropy energy, things of like that sort. And heroes like Barbara Gordon actually gave their lives to ensure his survival. Um, Jordan was stopped. Damage was able to release that energy, actually restarting the Big Bang, recreating time in the time stream. And it just kind of flooded all back out and everything was fine. But whatever Superman from Earth 2 did was actually planting the seeds of a, yet another crisis that was coming about later. Um, we're going to have to cover that next time. So, well, I mean, that was a lot of history to go over in just a short amount of time. And we have a lot more to go. So we'll, we'll just have to pick that up next time in the next episode. If you enjoy, enjoyed this uh, history of the DC Comic Universe... Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you here next time in the Long Box.